Hi there folks, Borislav247 here with another video and this is my guide to scoring big on the Infested Challenge. Now I know some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, you already have one of these videos. I did. It has now been removed from my collection as there is new information that I have learned that made parts of that old video incorrect. The previous video also had a couple of items missing on one of the maps and one or two things weren't explained quite as well as they should have been or they weren't explained at all or they were quite simply missed on this video I'm going to correct all of that so without any further ado folks we'll get on with the video right folks as always the rings for these endless horde challenges are bullets and ram and you ideally want to have every challenge completed to a gold standard to have all the patch upgrades Right folks, part one is definitely the most important part of this video. Basically, you have to use a Molotov to uh, burn an infestation nest. This will in effect open up an active zone. Now from here, you just need to spend roughly about the next minute and a half to two minutes, making sure the time does not run out, and you are basically waiting for the zone to close. And as you can see on the left there folks, it, there isn't much... Uh, left of that zone. Once you see the circle completely disappear what you're wanting to do is to go back into that house and the area where you burnt the nest you need to be going into that particular room where there will be a uh, nest residue. You just basically stand on that nest residue and you will see a blue light appear. Once this blue light appears that is it, you have created a permanent open zone where every kill now will get you double points. And from here folks, all you have to do for the well, second to last part of this is to get killed. And when the end screen comes up, just press retry and you will still have an open zone. Okay folks, straight from the off I'm looking to do a number of things on the first minute of this run. Now the canisters that I uh, move I will explain all about later on. But uh, first of all here I am looking to get the remote bomb. Then pick up the grenade and med kit. If you go just slightly past the grenade uh, where it's sitting on the counter you will pick up both items at once. From here, I'm looking to uh, head up to the two police cars up here to open the boots on both of them. After this, I am going to move the second of the problematic canisters that are in the main uh, town area. Once that canister is in there, it is safe. From here, I am looking to get the SMP9. Now, on one of my normal runs, this is the only change I would make. I would not go for the SMP9 straight away. I would stick with the little stubby. But it is an awful lot more difficult to work on a multiplier with the little stubby. Hence why I'm showing you this version with the SMP9. Everything else I do is exactly the same. So at this point, just looking to get a little bit of time. Then I am going for the best melee weapon that you can find on this challenge. Now at this point I'm looking to get round about 20 seconds or as near as um, before starting um, this run. At this point I'm just looking to bunch them up, then I'm looking for an attractor bomb. And I'm also going to place a remote bomb over here as well. This is very handy because it just gets everything going rather quickly at the start. You're getting a good 20 kills from the attractor bomb. Pick off a few of the freakers as they're getting towards uh, that point there. Then set up the remote bomb which will only kill 10 at a maximum. Now from there I'm looking to come through this alleyway section. Now very important, do not hit any of the barrels or the crates. These are all end game uh, items and I will explain a whole lot more about these later on and exactly why they are so, so important. So at this point now folks, I'm just looking to get this uh, multiplier well on the way. Uh, started off with a proximity bomb there which are 
very nice to use but really make sure that they're well bunched before doing this so that you get the maximum 20 kills. Now coming up here is a point where I love to use the remote bombs. It's really handy. You can climb up there, gain a little bit of stamina and then at the same time you just have a little bit of time where you can uh, press the, the button on the controller that sets off the bomb. After this, it is, uh, yep, yeah, I know it looks bad there, but you do actually have a lot of leeway in terms of with your health. Again, another uh, proximity bomb. Just make sure they are well away from any barrels or crates, because if they're anywhere in their proximity, they will set off the barrel and crate, and uh, you're going to lose a lot of points later on. And again, folks, I'm going to go into great detail explaining just how um, the scoring goes for the barrels, crates, canisters and petrol cans. They are all end game items, I can't stress this enough, do not touch them. However, the one thing that uh, people that may have watched my previous video will have noticed, um, I am using proximity bombs, remote bombs, grenades, pipe bombs, they are all now good to use at the start of a run because their baseline scores are the absolute lowest so you might as well use them as soon as humanly possible and there really isn't a better time anyhow as you're really trying to get a good solid multiplier going fairly quickly Right then folks, at this point my next priority is basically to get the last of the bullets used on the US 556 um, because I ideally want the IDF pop as soon as humanly possible. And here we go, I'm about to get it here now. So from here now basically I am ready to head to the main garage section. However, I don't want to go in just quite yet, just purely because I want to try and get the multiplier just a little bit more rock solid than what it currently is. And that there folks was a complete waste of a Molotov because I think I get one, yes, one kill. There we go, I can see from the minimap that uh, there's a whole load of uh, hordes uh, spawning right now so it's really just looking to get them all bunched and then from there do a little bit more work on the multiplier because I still have quite a number of throwables to use and then after that I will eventually head to the garage section But at this point, I really do want the multiplier a bit more solid than what it currently is. Yeah, always a nice section here where you can uh, pick them off with headshots. Especially as you do not have to worry about um, any of the barrels or crates or any explosives of that nature. The one area where you do have to watch is right here. As I can tell you now folks, I have hit barrels before from this uh, location. Again, I know there's more uh, hordes coming because I have seen them spawning on the map. But I'm just looking to take the time just to pick off as many freakers as I can. Okay, I should have one attractor bomb left. 
sorry, I haven't. I've got two and I haven't even armed it, so I'm going to get that used now. This is the next phase of what I uh, like to do with the canisters. There is three problematic canisters at the garage section. I'm taking care of two of them right now and the other one that you can see in the picture there, that is the third problematic caster. It is okay at the moment, but it will have to be moved because eventually uh, the horde will start kicking it around and you can get to a stage where you can lose it very quickly. And uh, I am going to stress the importance of these later on. Now that was a little bit unfortunate. The door over there has opened. However, you can close it. It's not uh, stuck open for the remainder of the game. I'll show that just a little bit later on. I'm still working on trying to get the multiplier um, fairly solid at this stage. Yeah, that is a better use of the Molotov. <laughs> I do still have quite a number of Napalm Molotovs. Uh, there is a very specific area that I'm going to use them. I really look to get the numbers and it's right here, folks. Because I can see more coming from both sides now. Normally, letting off a Napalm from there will get you guaranteed... 45 to 60 uh, Freaker kills and that is me moving the last of the problematic casters so at this point I would be pretty happy that is a, a job well done that is basically the the opening section taken care of I'm now basically going to work in the garage area for quite some time um, in order to get that multiplier an awful lot stronger. Okay, I want to use some more of these throwables, but uh, although there is more Freakers coming, because I know I don't have the numbers here at the moment to effectively use the Napalm Molotov, I'm just using a standard Molotov and also going to the SMP9 because their numbers are quite thin at this point there is no point in bringing out the heavy artillery and also worth noting folks that door that is currently open if you leave it that way over the course of an entire run that can become quite problematic but uh, I've certainly got no intentions of uh, leaving that door like that it can be closed which I will show very soon but now just let's take a look. Yep, that's more like it now. I'm starting to get the numbers of uh, Freakers that I want to uh, be using a Napalm Molotov. Because using them in the right places, you can get anything from... Well, you can actually get up to 70 if you use them in the correct spots. This part here should net me at least 60. And this is the point, folks, where I'm going to sort the door out as well. Just go up to it, press the square button, and there you go, job done. Right there folks, part 3 is all about the running, and for myself I use this garage area extensively on any of my full runs, and there are a few reasons why. The first one is a fairly obvious one, because there are a great number of vehicles uh, on this area that you can use to climb up and get stamina gains very quickly. That is, of course, as long as you are using the ram ring. As well as this, there are a great number of areas that you can vault over as well. And for the same reason, basically for stamina gain. Which you badly need, considering how fast the freakers go, as you can see here. As well as this, I like this area because there are not that much in the way of explosives. You do have three barrels one crate and two petrol cans in this area but virtually none of these are in your line of sight when you're shooting the freakers 
unlike the main town area. <laughs> now, I also like to use this area because it's quite a small area, which makes it ideal for um, keeping on top of the horde, as well as turning the horde at a moment's notice should you need to. Now, in a minute or so, I'm going to explain in a little bit more detail about my strategy for uh, how we go about this uh, particular part of the run. Right folks, here's my strategy in just a little bit more detail. Uh, during the run-in phase, I will start with using two boxes of ammo from the garage section, and specifically the two ammo boxes that are on the first floor of the building here. That way I can collect the one throwable and one remote bomb that are also upstairs in this section. After I have used up the ammo boxes uh, from the garage uh, section, I will then look to get all the ammo boxes from the main town area. And I start with the two that are on the very far side of the town, basically furthest away from the garage area, which both contain one ammo box and also contain one grenade each and one Molotov each. After I have uh, picked up these ammo boxes, I will go back to the garage section and work the Freaker Hordes from there. And every time I start getting low on uh, ammunition, I will go back to the main town area, collect another two ammo boxes at a time, and head back to the garage again. This I will continue to do until I have used all the ammo boxes from the main town area. That will finally leave me with four ammo boxes at the garage section, and from there I can use these to build up a really strong multiplier because at this point I don't have to go anywhere until I am ready to start the end game phase. And when it does get to that section folks, there are a few things that you need to know. Mainly about all the items that have been saved up until this point. And that is basically your barrels, crates, petrol cans and canisters which I'm about to go into a lot more detail in just one second. Right folks, part four is all about the explosive items that you basically leave until the end game section. And I'm starting by showing the locations of every single canister in this challenge. There are six canisters in the main garage section, and there are also another seven canisters in the main town section. Now, the reason why I'm showing all these locations is basically because the canisters are very similar to the petrol cans in that they can actually be moved. Now, the petrol cans, generally where all their locations are, will not move over the course of an entire run. However, the canisters are a different story altogether. If you do not take care of some of the canisters, the horde, when they come through, will move them, and you will never see them again. Right then, here are the locations of all 13 canisters. Now, of these 13, these six need to be moved. If you don't move these six, folks, rest assured, at the end of the run, when you're about to start the end game, these six canisters will be nowhere to be seen. Now, you don't have the luxury of being able to find them on the minimap either. They do not show up whatsoever. So really, your best bet is to get them moved as soon as possible. Now, why am I making such a big deal over the canisters? There are 13 of them, as I've already stated. And it's only when you see, and I will be showing this fairly soon, it's only when you see exactly what you can score with these bad boys at the end of a run that you realize why it is so important to have all 13 available. So for the next section of this uh, video, folks, I'm actually going to show these six particular canisters and where I would normally store them over the course of a run. Right, folks, canister number one, I will always place in this area right from the very start. Canister number two, again, a very early move. Once it's in that vehicle, perfectly safe. Canister number three, I will always move this the very first time I come back to the main town area from the garage. 
Now, casters number four, five and six can potentially be moved very quickly by doing it like this. And a tractor bomb is first thrown down. Then, I will put caster number four in the pickup there. Caster number five, I will very strategically place over in that corner. And then caster number six, I will move over to a sign which is over on the far side here. Actually quite close to the outward bounds, but it is okay. Now, there is another option for number six. You can place it inside the building here, where it will be perfectly safe. Right there. Alright folks, there is also an array of other explosive items on the Infested Challenge. And as you can see on screen here, I have a map showing exactly where they all are. And you're basically talking 15 barrels, 6 crates, and 4 petrol cans. And all of these you are to basically save for the end game section like you would with the canisters. Because they all have the same scoring traits about them. Which I am going to show in a little bit more detail. Um, a shout out also has to go to Horde Slayer for basically bringing to my attention that in a previous video... I didn't show this information at all, and uh, so I'm going to make sure that certainly isn't going to be the case with this video, because it really, the, the devil really is in the detail when it comes to the scoring for these particular items, and I'm going to show you right now just exactly why they are worth keeping until the very end of the run. Right folks, I'm going to start by showing just how effective these canisters actually are in the end game section, as well as the ideal way to use them. I like to drop them from height, get out a gun quickly and then one shot and that's it done. 15 kills there that I scored, but this is where all the extra comes in, just watch the screen. Pause it right there folks. Uh, as you can see, the multiplier went up by four. That is because I actually got four. It shows on screen explosive kills. They are actually, in effect, burning kills that take place after the main explosion. But the beauty of these explosive kills that take place afterwards is the score for them. They score five times higher than a standard freaker kill. They are insane in terms of what you uh, can score from them. Not only that, folks, but you also get a zone bonus as well for each one of these uh, Freakers that are killed afterwards. So for those four Freakers that I got with the burning kills there, I got 615,000 alone for those. And the one canister in total got me just shy of one and a half million. That is why I rate the canisters so highly and keep them until the end of the game. Right folks, here's the sort of damage you can do with the barrel kills. On this occasion I get just over 1 million for the initial explosion. And wait for it. There you go. Another 7 kills through burning kills. Even though they show up on screen as explosive kills. On this occasion, as you can see, they're worth 133,000 points per freaker. Which gave me just over 1 million for those seven freakers alone, which give me a grand total of just over two million for that one barrel. Right folks, petrol cans. These need to be used ideally in the same way as you would with the canisters. So I'm looking for somewhere to throw this petrol can from height, get out a gun and one shot. Now on this occasion, I get 10 kills from the petrol can. However, here is what you're waiting for, and it is, in this case, another seven kills through explosive kills that happen after the initial explosion. And that has given me w just over one million just from those seven, and a grand total of just over one and a half million for that one petrol can. Again, perfect example of why you keep all these items until the end game section. Right, moving very quickly on to crate kills, and as you can see there, I got just over 1 million for the initial explosion. However, here comes the good stuff. 
And as you can see here, folks, I got six explosive kills, which came afterwards. And that gave me just shy of one million from them alone and giving me a grand total of just over two million for that one crate. Now, here is some very important information that I want to pass on because this challenge obviously is very similar to the surrounded challenge. However, there is one big difference. The crates on the infested challenge will get you explosive kills which come after the initial explosion. On the surrounded challenge, this is not the case. The crates on the surrounded challenge will get you the maximum of 20 if there are a lot of freakers around that particular crate. But that is it. They do not start to, to burn afterwards. And because of this, there is simply no explosive kills afterwards. So it's actually worth remembering, folks, if you are you exploding the crates on the surrounded challenge, you ideally want to do them as soon as possible. They're not worth holding on to until the end of the game, unlike the crates on the infested challenge, which get you some crazy scores. Right, folks, part five is all about the end game. And for me, the end game starts as soon as I have picked up the last box of ammunition. Because I know from this point, I am really going to have to be starting to think about collecting other weapons very soon. Uh, now, as you can see on screen, folks, I've included a map of exactly where all the weapons are that you can get on this challenge, as well as the melee weapons as well. But to be honest, folks, the only two that you need to concern yourself with are the superior metal axe and the fire axe, because the others are absolute rubbish. Now, after I have got the last box of ammunition, I tend to like to run down the sidearm first. And for a very good reason. Because before starting on taking out the barrels and crates especially, there is one very special weapon that I like to have for the job. And I'm going to show it in just one second. And it's the PDW, folks. Now, the reason I choose this gun for taking out the barrels and crates is a very simple one. Just look at the bullet penetration that this gun has. It is insane. Basically, if you are close enough to the Freakers and you're not aiming at a torso, you can actually go through four Freakers with one bullet with this bad boy, uh, which makes it the ideal weapon. Because more often than not, when you are trying to shoot a barrel or a crate, you are going to have Freakers in the way and you ideally want something that is going to go through them. Right folks, I'm just going to show a couple of examples of this bad boy in action as it really does make the end game section so much easier in taking out the barrels and crates. Just like that. Alright, as well as this folks, you will notice at the beginning of the game you have three attractors available to you. I like to leave them all and use them in the end game section on these three particular areas. This one in particular is very handy to use an attractor on as it is about the only safe way that you can get a group of the Freakers near that crate and then get a shot off safely. The last one folks is very similar. Just make sure you approach the barrel from this side. That way you can get the Freakers grouped, get a shot in safely and then get a clean getaway. Now folks, melee weapons. I still stand by the idea of having a melee weapon at the end of the game to use because you do score incredible points with them. However, there was a new strategy that was suggested to me by a fellow uh, gamer, uh, Horde Slayer again, and this idea is absolutely brilliant. It's so good, I'm going to share it with everyone. Uh, basically, you ideally want to be using your melee weapons throughout the entire run because this way folks you can potentially get an extra 150 to 200 kills but in order to do this you need to be able to maintain these melee weapons and that is why I am showing you now the scrap locations in order to maintain these weapons 
There are three vehicles that you can raid for scrap, as well as three corpses. And I'll show you where these all are. Now, as well as this, folks, it's well worth noting that uh, I mentioned at the very beginning of the game about uh, wanting to have gold standard on other challenges in order to get the benefits of the patches. You ideally want a gold standard on the outride challenge in order to get 40% extra melee durability. Now, folks, a couple of extra tips to show here. Canister drops. You can actually do a straight canister drop by simply stopping. Selecting a weapon, and there you go. You can drop a canister or a petrol can nice and easy. Very handy for setting them up in other areas. Now, the little stubby. This awful, awful weapon <laughs> can actually be of use in getting uh, a good amount of kills if you use it correctly. And I'm about to show this. This is the only weapon where I would recommend you shooting from distance. As you can see now, folks, I'm getting at least two kills every time. Never go for the front of the pack unless you are well away from them. Here as well, just make sure, ideally, you want a height advantage as well. And then every time, you will get at least two kills with this weapon. Right, folks, this video is now just about done, but I just wanted to recap on the most important points of this infested video. The first one is by far the most important. Create an open zone before starting a run. This is very simply because once you create an open zone, you are effectively scoring double the amount of points for every kill that you make in the entire game. Number two, establish a good multiplier. I show at the very beginning of this run how important it is to get a good multiplier going but it is now so much easier to do because you have all your throwables, remote bombs etc that you can use. In a previous video I always said do not use these until the end of the run, that's no longer the case. Use them at the beginning of the run. Much handier to get, get your multiplier going very well and it's not going to impact badly upon your score. In fact, it's going to help your score because these are the lowest form of scoring items. Number three, use the garage area extensively throughout a run. I choose to do this because basically it makes the run, which is quite a long one at the best of times, so much easier because you really have uh, your options wise in terms of directing the horde is very easy. <laughs> you're just running around the garage area and if they do happen to be coming at you from both sides it's no problem you have enough um, area sections where you can turn the horde very very easily now the last point using the PDW to take out the barrels and crates in the end game section there are another number of uh, weapons that you can use folks there are sniper rifles etc I just feel the PDW is the best gun for the job. And if you follow everything that I have shown on this video, folks, I guarantee you, you will get a high score. And that's pretty much about it, folks. All I can say is thank you very much for watching the video, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Take care.